Hello, friends. At 11 a.m. on April 11, 1970, an American rocket took off from Kennedy Space Center for the Apollo 13 mission. One, zero. We have commit and we have liftoff at 2.13. It had three people going to the moon on it. It was interesting to note that it hadn't been a year since Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon. One small step for man. It was already the third time that NASA had sent people to the moon. The astronauts in this rocket were very sure about their goal and their dream after seeing how well the last two flights went. They wanted to walk on the moon. They didn't know at the time that their dream would never come true, though. They were about 330,000 kilometers from Earth in April 1970, when all of a sudden they heard a loud bang, a big crash that shook the whole spaceship. One of the gas tanks had broken, it was found, and the air tank on the other side was leaking quickly. Uh, Houston, we had a problem. The people in charge of missions on the ground were shocked. They thought the tools were not working right. While inside the spaceship could see through the window that air was leaking. They can see, though, that the blast threw the spaceship off course so much that it was now traveling thousands of kilometers away from Earth every second. The men on Apollo 13 were so far away from Earth in just a few hours that it set a new record. As of now, no one has gone farther away from Earth than these three men did on Apollo 13. Back then, the question wasn't whether they could land on the moon, but whether they could make it back to Earth alive. In this sad story, we learn about Apollo 13. Carbon dioxide levels in the lunar module are rising. The main heat shield was not designed to operate in free space for extended periods of time. The crew were beginning to suffer. It was a dire state. It was a real, real emergency situation. In 1961, John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, told the world that he would have people on the moon by the end of the decade. Before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. You should think about this promise in terms of the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union were in a race at that time. The flights Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 both went well in 1969. Not only did astronauts walk on the moon, they also made it back to Earth safely. Kennedy's promise came true, but it had a side effect. People in the government became much less interested in spending money on space right after it. There's no doubt that people were thrilled when they saw the first man walk on the moon. But people can't be that excited a second, third, or fourth time. Public interest in the moon is fading fast. People believe Apollo 13 will just be another routine flight. The US government cut NASA's funds because of this. They also called off many planned flights for the next few years, such as Apollo 20. In light of this, the Apollo 13 mission took place at a very important point in the history of spaceflight. Space was still important enough for the U.S. government to pay for, so NASA had to show them. That's why Apollo 13's main goal wasn't just to look at and map the moon's surface, but also to give people the skills they needed to work in that setting. The main mission objective of Apollo 13 is the scientific exploration of the moon. We hope to find out a lot about the origin of the moon and from that, the origin of our own planet, the Earth. The spacecraft for Apollo 13 was built in a way that was similar to those used on earlier flights. The command module, the service module, the moon module, and the launch escape system were the four major parts. It was sent into space on a Saturn V rocket. The command module, which was the main part of the ship, was where all three scientists were sitting. It was only a small part, though. This is the command module. It's a cone shape and is only 11 feet long and 13 feet wide. This is where all the instruments, tracking gear, telephones, life support systems, and small engines were kept. There was a lot of air in the service module, which was the second most important part. It also had more engines and fuel cells that made power. People often just call the Command and Service Module the CSM, which stands for Command and Service Module. The Lunar Module, which was the third part, was meant to land on the moon. It was meant to be connected to the CSM module again after the work on moon was done. There wasn't a lot of use for the fourth part, the launch escape system. Its only job was to keep the pilot safe in case something went wrong during the launch. This is how it works. In the event of an accident during the launch, the rocket will safely remove the pilots and take them away from the danger. This video shows the place where the abortion method was tried. If the launch goes well, on the other hand, the LES is thrown away because it is no longer needed. 
After Apollo 13's safe and successful launch on April 11, 1970, the LES was no longer needed. There were three men on board, Captain Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, who flew the lunar module, and Jack Swigert, who flew the command module. By chance, none of these three were supposed to be picked for this task in the first place. At first, three different pilots were picked to go on this trip, but each of them had their own issues that kept them from being able to join this task. This is why these three pilots leave Earth. About 200,000 people were on the ground to watch this rocket launch. Compared to the launch of Apollo 11 the year before, this was a small number. Seven million people watched the rocket take off. NASA once more saw how quickly people lost interest in exploring space. But if we talk about the operation, this spaceship took off without a hitch and headed in the right direction. They were told it would take three days to get to the Fra Mauro crater on the moon. There is a big hole on the moon's surface here, which is thought to have a lot of data about both the Earth and the moon. What went wrong the most in the first two days of the flight was astronaut Jack Swigert realizing he forgot to file his tax return. He called Mission Control on Earth to see if he could get more time. Uh-oh, have you guys completed your income tax? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I got a... You know, that it, it's funny, kind of, things kind of happen real fast down there, and I, I do need an extension. Huh? I didn't get mine filed. He got a friendly answer telling him that he could get an extra 60 days. That everything was going well is shown by this answer. Nothing went wrong with the plan for the first two days. On April 13th, the team is told they need to test the lunar module. Not only that, but they also have to do a TV show. This is where the cams will be used to show the world what's inside the command module and service module. At that time, no TV network showed this broadcast because not many people were interested in it. Flight controllers on the ground asked astronaut Swigert to check the oxygen level. There was nothing strange about this. Not much was wrong with the check of the air tanks in the service module. Suddenly, there was a big blast while this check was being done. A lot of lights and sounds went off to warn people. It turned out that one tank of oxygen was empty and the amount of oxygen in the other tank was dropping quickly. The people in charge on Earth at first thought that the tools were giving them false information, but it turned out to be correct. If people really wanted to save these pilots' lives, they had to act right away. That mission was boring, so TV stations didn't show it on the news. Suddenly, this mission was all over the news. To the moon is in serious jeopardy this morning and is not going to make a moon landing. The air tanks on board the spaceship, these held oxygen in the form of a liquid. In the middle, there was a heater that turned the liquid oxygen into gas. In the service module of Apollo 13, there were two of these tanks. The number two tank was originally put in Apollo 10, but it was taken out to be changed. A small accident happened with it. It got broken when it fell down while being fixed. It had a broken tube inside, but no one saw it during the check. People who were trying it noticed that the tank wouldn't be empty all the way. Heaters were used to boil it all the way through to get rid of any air that was still in it. It turned out that the clock inside could show temperatures as high as 30. But when the heater was used to heat the oxygen tank, the temperature would reach as high as 538 degrees Celsius. This high heat wasn't noticed because the thermometer didn't pick it up. Due to this extreme heating, the insulation of the electrical wires in the tank were damaged. Before the mission, NASA managers and engineers gave the tank the all clear after a full study, but they couldn't see the damage inside. And this is why on Apollo 13, there was a spark and the tank exploded during a regular check of the tank on the third day. This was caused by the electric lines. Putting the tank on the outside of the spaceship was just a lucky accident. All of the astronauts would have been killed if it had been connected inside the ship and gone off there. In the service module, only a 13-foot panel was broken. What else did the spaceship have wrong with it? The astronauts weren't sure. Now everyone had to choose something important. How could they get back to Earth? The spaceship could get back to Earth faster if it was turned around. However, the service module's main engine had to be turned on in order to do this. In the CSM section, the main engine was close to the blast. No one was sure if the engine was broken or not. Going toward the moon and going around it was the second way to get back to Earth. There would be no need for the engine of the service module for this, but there was a chance that it would take four to five days to get back to Earth. Were there still enough air and water for they? The flight director for NASA picked the second choice, to go back the long way. 
The astronauts were told to turn off the CSM section right away. They were also told to use the lunar module as an escape on the way back. It was safe to make this choice, but it did have some issues. The lunar module was made so that two passengers could stay inside for 20 hours at a time. As I already told you, its original goal was to land on the moon and reconnect with the CSM module. But now these three guys were going to stay in the lunar module for four to five days. The lunar module engines were not made so that they could be used over and over again. This move was also to a large extent risky. The astronauts were told to turn off all systems in the ship that weren't needed, including the heaters that were already there, to save energy and supplies. It was important to keep the power down. As planned, the men sat down in the lunar module and the engines were turned on for the first time. It's called a burn when the engine is turned on. To get to the new road, they do the first burn. They made it to the other side of the moon with this burn, the moon's far side. It was the first time that people had gone so far away from Earth, and this record still can't be broken. As far as they could go, they were 400,000 kilometers from Earth. They could get to Earth about 153 hours after launch if they kept going this way, but this time frame was very dangerous. If they got to Earth after that long, there would only be one hour of extra air, food, and water for them. The NASA team on the ground thought this gap was pretty small. It was told to them to burn the lunar module engine a second time for that reason. The engineers in mission control did a lot of math to figure out if the engine in the lunar module could handle the second burn or not. The estimates were right. After the second burn, the flight time dropped 153 hours to 143 hours, an 11-hour window of time to live. Another problem came up before the crew could calm down, the large amount of carbon dioxide present. Ships in space have both oxygen tanks and lithium hydroxide containers to get rid of carbon dioxide. The astronauts breathe out carbon dioxide when they take in air. It will lead to a lot of carbon dioxide, which can be bad if that carbon dioxide is not taken away. So lithium hydroxide is stored in jars so that carbon dioxide can mix with it and turn it into lithium carbonate. However, there was a problem. The lunar module only had enough lithium hydroxide for two people to last for two days. Three people wanted to stay alive for four days though. It was good that there were also some containers in the command function. The filters in the lunar module, on the other hand, were round while theirs were square. There were 24 hours for the experts on the ground to figure this out. Astronauts from the ship talked to them and told them about everything going on around them. They wanted to make something that could solve the problem out of plastic bags, cardboard, suit hoses, and duct tape. They figure out how to make this work after a few hours of trying different things. After being given step-by-step -step directions, the things there were used to make a new gadget that lowers the carbon dioxide level again. Officer Lovell wrote in his book, Lost Moon, the contraption wasn't very handsome, but it worked. This is what they made. Every little thing about this rescue mission was thought of and done. The astronauts were told that each day they shouldn't drink more than 200 milliliters of water because they will have to go to the bathroom more often if they drink more water. These three men lost 14 kilograms. Hayes, an astronaut, gets an illness in his urinary system. When Apollo 13 spacecraft gets back to Earth after four days, the crew understand they need to burn again. They hadn't taken into account the cooling vapor inside the spaceship when they did their math. The spaceship got off track because of this. The mission is now back on track thanks to Commander Lovell's second burn of the lunar module. Luckily, the spaceship was also able to handle the third burn. Even though this, the lunar module was only meant to handle one burn, everyone around the world held their breath and watched the news and were ready for the pilots to come back to Earth. The biggest question now was whether this broken spaceship would be able to handle the heat when it hit Earth's atmosphere. Are the astronauts going to be able to make it? They had to go back to the command module for this part because that was the only one that was designed to land on Earth again. When the command module hit the Earth's atmosphere, there was no way to communicate. It was normal for this to happen because ionization of the air blocks radio waves, making it impossible for NASA workers on the ground to talk to pilots in space. Most of the time, this transmission block lasts for two to three minutes. It was thought that the transmission block would last no more than three minutes. The third minute was up, but the other end did not answer. 10 seconds go by. One minute. There was still no word from the spaceship after four minutes. Would the scientists be able to stay alive? 
Finally, after four minutes and 27 seconds, the other side was able to communicate. Hello, Houston. This is Odyssey. It's good to see you again. People who were watching it on TV could finally take a deep breath. All three men made it out alive. It was set off in the command module, and the capsule slowly fell into the Pacific Ocean. Teamwork was necessary. Good leadership, initiative, to think out outside of the box, when things go wrong, how do we repair them? Those are the three things that were absolutely... The three men safely returned home. None of the three men set foot on the moon, even though the operation failed. Still, this Apollo 13 mission left its mark on history. A lot of books and movies have been made about it. After looking into what happened, NASA has put in place many safety steps so that this kind of thing wouldn't happen on any other tasks. After Apollo 13, Apollo 14, Apollo 15, Apollo 16, and Apollo 17, all of these missions were successful. For NASA, Apollo 17 was the last mission in the Apollo program. It took place on December 7, 1972. Three days were spent on the moon's surface, and that was the last time people went to the moon until now. What's the point of this? My Apollo 11 video has the answer to this question. You can click here to watch it. Thank you very much.